Hey everyone and welcome back to the Earth and Bloom channel. Uh, we are supposed to get snow tonight. As you can see, we've been doing a bunch of milling, trying to get some logs cleaned up before the winter. I tried to video a few of those, but I might be able to save the clips, we'll see. The GoPro said it corrupted or something. But we got some spalted maple here. Some ambrosia maple. This one is spalting pretty nice under there, a little bigger. These are piles of butternut. Got them bundled ready for the winter. This is a big Norwood maple. Norway, sorry. I think it's Norway, yeah. Norway maple. Got it strapped together. It's a decent size. Then this is what we're dealing with today. Blocking up wood. These two here we are gonna mill. So I'm gonna mill that one. They're ash. And I'm gonna mill that one just because it's a little shorter. I don't have measuring tape on me. I should find one. I can go find a measuring tape. Alright, surprisingly one wasn't too far away. Oh, and yeah, sun's setting right now. But it was a beauty day today. It was like 8 degrees, 6 degrees, around there. 36 inches by 28. So that'll be a nice coffee table size. Airplanes. But we are not doing these today. We'll probably mill those in another video later on. That's 14. That's pretty good actually. 14 is good enough for firewood. But there's this one here. So you can see I've already been playing around with some big stuff right here. But this was the biggest of the bunch. This was a big load that was dropped off right here. It's a couple inches big. It's at 18, so maybe we should cut it down. I guess you guys will be able to see the... The 572 in this video. All right, what way does this want to roll? I think this way. That'll work. Oh. Oh. Hmm. There's a nice wedge. It's too small. Maybe we'll use this piece of wood here. Beauty. All right. As you can see, it's a pretty big one. We're 32 by 38. This side here, much bigger. 42 inches. And it's pretty symmetrical, I think. Yeah, 42. So, let's get the 572 fired up quick. We'll do one cut here. And then we'll show you how, how to properly deal with a round like this.
respectable width now. Stand it back up here. Firewood. Now, let's see how we deal with it. All right, guys, I just got my ax of choice. And we'll see what we can do. It is fairly wet still, but it is ash. So it shouldn't be a problem. A couple good hits. A couple good hits with this axe here. We should get her no problem. Get her lined up. Just lift her over the pile. And you gotta make sure you don't drop them. If you have a boiler, this is the machine to get. This whole pile you're looking at that I'm splitting into probably took uh, all together 35 minutes to split like this. a little bit quicker if they're not so big. And I usually split on the uh, right side of the pile just so the end of the wood splitter, as you can see there, is kind of hitting the wood. So if you split on the right side, it doesn't hit the wood.
So as you guys can see, that's a lot easier than using an ax, a split and maul, or even the log lift on the Easton made. Uh, it took, what, all of three minutes to slice that whole big one up into chunks like this. So I would call these boiler chunks, but now it's super easy. They're all, I can grab all of these with my log tongs and park the Easton made beside the pile, and this will be chewed up real quick through the four way. Each piece is about four wayable. And then there's no, then there's no really re-splitting, rolling big pieces back, having the chance of a big piece rolling on you. So yeah, this is the Split Fire 3209. For a lot of you that have been here for a while, you know I bought that new last year for my Mini X, which is a Bobcat E26. So a two and a half ton with the counterweight, I'm three ton. Uh, and that's why I went with the 3209 model. It's a little lighter, uh, a little faster cycle time, but you don't get the tonnage. So, which is really dependent on your machine flow. But yeah, you get into knotty pieces, you gotta work around the knots anyways. But for this machine, this model of split fire is the perfect size. So yeah, like I said, like I was saying, this pile took about 35 minutes. And yeah, it's a it's a five five foot pile by quite a bit. So I'd say there's just about a cord right here. Uh let's see if we can do that piece right there. Alright, like I was saying, I like to split on this side of the finished pile you're working with. And to start a big round, I always put my pusher on that side. That'll give you the most tonnage. These butt cuts are always goofy because they're really flared out. Well, a little bit of doing. Then you go to your finished pile. doesn't really care what way you grab the block. You can split them like that, you can... You can just do whatever. Grab them. sideways. So yeah, like I was saying, awesome for boiler wood. If you got a tree service that wants to bring you straight grain, big rounds, you can fill your woodshed pretty quick.
just like that. That's another big one in the pile. So as you can see, that's kind of how I deal with my big rounds. I'll stockpile them right there or wherever. I'll just stockpile them in a pile. And then I'll take the mini, split them into my round pile, send them through the Easton made. Uh, but as you can see, it's getting dark super early nowadays. Still nice out, so I'll keep splitting, but it's no good for recording. So hopefully you like this little, this short, shorter video, I guess, of the split fire work in here. Works really well on this Mini, and it's super fuel efficient. Uh, this has the 24 horse Kubota in it, I believe, so it doesn't use much fuel, and it's a lot easier spending the money on diesel than hurting your back on these big rounds. Uh, I got a few more to deal with. I'm gonna chop up a few more here. Couple piles. So, anyways. This is where we'll end the video, I think. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that subscribe button down below. Hit the like button, the share button. And if we're lucky, we'll catch you in the next one.